Warriors and mages, gather close and listen well, for today we venture below the earth, where nature's secrets and sorrows are buried deep. Beneath the arid lands of the barrens, a complex of caves breathes with the sorrow of a corrupted dream. This is a tale of deception and the fragile veneer between a vision of splendor and the abyss of madness. Welcome to the depths where nightmares dwell. Welcome to the Wailing Caverns. The story of the Wailing Caverns begins with Naralex, a night elf druid who discovered a network of cave systems deep beneath the earth of the Barrens. He named them for the mournful sounds that echoed through their chambers, and carrying a grand vision, he dreamed of restoring this vast sun-scorched savanna to its former glory as a lush forest that existed here before the cataclysmic sundering tore the world asunder. With their extensive underground waterways, they represented to Naralex the perfect instrument of revival, a natural conduit through which the barons could be reborn. Accompanied by a cadre of loyal disciples, the night elf ventured deep into the heart of the caverns. There he sought to connect the waters directly to the Emerald Dream, intending to channel its life-giving energies into the arid landscape above. However, the Emerald Dream harbored a dark corruption and an overwhelming nightmare ensnared Naralex, turning his noble quest into an unending torment. The corruption spilled forth, twisting the cavern's inhabitants into monstrous, deviant forms and driving his disciples to madness, who then proclaimed themselves the Druids of the Fang. These once hallowed halls have since become a labyrinth of horrors twisted by the very forces they sought to harness. Yet amidst the darkness, there are those who have remained uncorrupted and steadfastly loyal to their cause. These brave souls are the remnants of the disciples of Naralex, still dedicated to the Druid's vision of purification and renewal. Among them are Ebru and Nalpak, who both have managed to resist the foul presence that has overwhelmed the caverns. Positioned in a cave just above the entrance to the Wailing Caverns, the remaining disciples now call upon the aid of willing adventurers to help cleanse the undergrounds of its corrupted inhabitants. Now, Trapped in an eternal slumber, Naralek sleeps, while his disciples work tirelessly to restore the caverns to their former glory and awaken their mentor from his darkened state. As we stand at its threshold, the challenge beckons to all daring adventurers. Will you accompany me on a quest to purge the corruption? Your courage and strength are needed more than ever to help rekindle the hope of redemption and bring an end to the nightmare below the earth. Our journey begins under the scorching sun of the Barrens, where a vibrant oasis conceals the entrance to the Wailing Caverns. Here, amidst the lush vegetation, the Kolkar Centaur have set up their camps, their eyes as sharp as the spears they wield. Watch them closely, but maintain your distance, for these foes show no mercy to those who intrude upon their territory. A cave opening beckons us further into the caverns, and as we navigate through the rocky tunnels, the air grows humid and heavy. Sudden hisses betray the presence of wind serpents, coiled and ready to strike, and keep your eyes peeled for the shadows that flit across these dimly lit walls. They belong to the deviant raptors, lurking and ever watchful. These creatures are masters of their domain, and we must tread lightly to avoid their notice. A corner turned reveals an abandoned campsite with a fire still burning, as if recently deserted. A closer inspection unveils the silhouette of Mad Maglish, a goblin with a notorious fondness for rare alcoholic beverages. The goblin is here in hiding, clutching his latest prize, a 99-year-old port stolen from Ratchet. Though it might be tempting to investigate further, we best leave Mad to his own drunken adventures and continue on our path. Let's move quietly now. We wouldn't want to disturb his revelry, or worse, draw his attention. Navigating deeper, the caverns reveal their hidden beauty. Condensed water drips rhythmically from the stone ceiling, pooling into many seemingly tranquil ponds. 
but do not be fooled by its serene appearance. Watch closely as the surface suddenly breaks, exposing the deviate lurkers, prehistoric creatures that glide through the water with an appetite for those that wander too near the pool's edge. It's anyone's guess how long these ancient animals have been submerged here. The path soon widens into an expansive grotto known as the Cavern of Mist, where a spectacular underground oasis unfolds before our very eyes, hidden from the outside world. Let's pause for a moment and gaze upon this spectacle, a sight seldom witnessed by those who walk under the sun. Large geysers erupt from geothermal vents, their sprays feeding an opulent hot spring at the cavern's center. The mist hangs thick here, with lush vegetation draping from vines that stretch eagerly toward the pool's life-giving waters. Around the pool, stinglash serpents sweep through the air, and in the distance, the roars of slayer raptors echo against the stone walls. If fortune favors us, we might even catch a glimpse of Trigor the Lasher, the three-headed Hydra reigning over this underground domain. Ahead, the true entrance to the Wailing Caverns awaits, shrouded in mystery and draped in the whispers of those who dared this path before us and those brave enough to follow after us. Let us move forward with hearts steady and eyes open, ready to discover what secrets await us in the shadows. Upon stepping into the Wailing Caverns, we're greeted by a Tauren, one of the last true disciples uh, of Narelex. The Druid sleeps again, he announces with a heavy heart. Long ago, we came here with a noble aim, to tap into the Emerald Dream and transform the Barrens into a verdant paradise. Alas, his focus faltered and his mind was poisoned by nightmarish visions. Now, the caverns are infested with reptilian beasts born from his corrupted dreams. He must be awakened, the Tauren insists, or he will be lost forever and a great evil will be unleashed. With this in mind, we press on, fully aware of the gravity of the situation. As we follow the winding passages, an underground clearing comes into view. The bioluminescence of the cavern's flora illuminates our path, while we continue our way towards the area known among explorers as the Screaming Gully. The howls you hear. It's the wind forced through the cavern's narrow fissures, creating an ambience that permeates the cave. Be on alert here. This area is patrolled by the Druids of the Fang. Originally, Disciples of Narelex committed to rejuvenating the barren earth, they have tragically lost their way, now intent on reshaping the land to align with their distorted visions. Each step we take could bring us into their territory, so let's move carefully and keep our wits about us. The air suddenly fills with a cold, sinister whisper that cuts through the silence, and a voice hisses a chilling declaration. None, None can, can stand, stand against, against the Serpent Lords. It is the voice of Lady Anacondra, who was once known as Scarlet Leaf, a name from a past life before she was twisted by Narelex's nightmare into one of the feared Fanglords. Her presence echoes the corruption that seeps through the cavernous walls. As Narelex's dreams of a reborn Azeroth turned into nightmares, Lady Anacondra, caught in the throes of his failed vision, shed her sanity like old skin embracing a new dark destiny where her serpent kin rule over all. Beware, for her madness is as dangerous as the fangs of the reptiles she commands. The battle ensues with the crackle of lightning as Anacondra hurls bolts of raw fury our way. We must dodge the electrifying assaults while carefully avoiding the thorny aura surrounding her, which retaliates against any direct strike with a vengeful lash. Do not engage the lady head-on. Use ranged tactics if you can. Intermittently, one of our companions slumps to the ground, ensnared in a slumber wrought from the deepest visions of the Emerald Dream. The commotion of our confrontation has not gone unnoticed. The desperate cries of raptors echo through the cavern, and sensing the turmoil, they rush in to defend their fanglord. Stay alert, keep moving, and watch each other's backs. We must stand together and prepare for their charge if we are to navigate this encounter and come out alive. The battle intensifies and we dodge, parry and strike with all our might. 
Finally, the fight reaches its tipping point. With a concerted effort, Lady Anacondra falls. The oppressive energy that clouded the air dissipates as her grip on the cavern falters. We stand victorious, and a moment of respite allows us to explore the possessions left behind. Here, take this, the elusive belt of the fang. It's a highly coveted piece of the Embrace the Viper clothing set, eagerly sought by those drawn to its allure. And don't overlook the snakeskin bag. It's spacious enough to hold the many spoils yet to come from our ongoing journey. Let's take a moment here to catch our breath and regather our strength. This victory, while significant, is just the first whisper in the echoing wail of the cavern's deep secrets. Having regrouped after our encounter with Lady Anacondra, we continue our adventure, traversing the dense, misty air that clings to us like a second cloak. Look below, in the river that carves through the gully. There the ancient Kresh paces through the shallow waters, a turtle of such grandeur and scale that he seems a living monument of the primordial world. This grand creature, unfazed by the corrupted dreams that torment this realm, lumbers forward with the timeless patience of the earth. His presence is as much a part of the cavern as the stone and water around him. Kresh's massive shell, a natural fortress, has turned aside countless foes looking to claim it as a trophy. For the hunters in our group, Kresh represents more than a majestic sight, they see in his calm gaze the potential for a robust companion capable of facing difficult foes in future adventures. Yet they know that not all nature's children wish to be tamed. As we edge past the turtle, a subtle understanding forms. There is no need for conflict here, no glory in disturbing the serene march of such a gentle creature. Today, with respect for the still uncorrupted denizens of this underground abode, we choose a different path, a path of quiet admiration and shared kinship with the age-old rhythms of the Wailing Caverns. It is best that we leave the turtle to his wanderings, undisturbed. Follow along now, quickly, for our journey continues. Ahead, the caves twist and turn into shadows yet unexplored, each step bringing us deeper into the heart of ancient mysteries. Ready yourselves, brave companions, for what lies ahead may challenge the courage of even the stoutest hearts among us. As we delve deeper into the wailing caverns, the air grows thick with the scent of damp earth and the distant, unmistakable tang of venom. Before long, we draw near to the infamous Pit of Fangs, a hollow where echoes of past battles seem to linger. This is a place of legend, where the paths of many an adventurer have converged, each drawn by fate or fortune. Be on your guard, for here dwells Lord Cobran, another who has succumbed to corruption, rising as one of the Fanglords in these depths. The former disciple of Narelex was celebrated among the druids of the Cenarian Circle for his exceptional skill at harnessing animal forms, known back then by the name given to the night elf at birth, Jarlaxla. The cavern's dark influence subtly corrupted his abilities, transforming him into a being of malice and retribution, his name now a hiss of malevolence in the gloom. Surrounded by his slithering minions, he stands regally, commanding his domain like a king before his court. His clear voice cuts through the silence, exclaiming, You will never wake a dreamer. This proclamation sets the stage for the battle that is about to unfold. In a dance of fangs and evasion, Cobran unleashes his primal might with the speed of a viper, each strike laced with the fury of his newfound kin. Watch carefully, for the threat here is not just the brute strength of the Fanglord, but also the soporific charm of his enchantments and the lethal properties of his poison assaults. His right hand, bearing a fearsome claw, rips through the air, aiming with lethal precision. As the fray reaches its crescendo, Lord Cobran, sensing his end near, undergoes a fearsome transformation. He shifts into a colossal serpent, a spectacle of nature's terrifying splendor. His power peaks, his strikes raining down with renewed vigor. Yet the adventurers stand undaunted, their wills unbroken by fang or spell. The final blow is struck, 
and the Lord of the Fang's reign of venom comes to an abrupt end. The ensuing silence is heavy but triumphant. Gathering the group around the still form of their vanquished foe, let's begin to distribute the hard-earned spoils. For your bravery, take Cobran's grasp, a mail belt for our sturdiest warrior, ensuring his resilience in battles to come. And behold the leggings of the Fang. These are famed among adventurers for their agility and a crucial second addition to complete the set of the Viper. Fortune does favor the bold, or so it seems in these shadowed depths. Finally, the robe of the moccasin finds its new keeper in our wisest mage. As the group recovers, they carry away more than just treasures. They take with them a story of a druid who lost his path and was ensnared by the darkness he sought to vanquish, leaving us all to wonder what other dangers lay hidden down below. Beneath the stalactite-laden ceilings of the Wailing Caverns, we press on, where each step takes us deeper into this labyrinth and strengthens our bond of camaraderie. Ahead lies the winding chasm, a passage as treacherous as it is awe-inspiring. Now brace yourselves, for here we encounter Arin, or rather, the shadow of the man he once was. Now known as Lord Pythas, his tale is a somber one. Once a venerated warrior and protector to Narelex himself, he tragically succumbed to the very affliction he swore to fight. Renamed in his madness, the corrupted guardian now stands as a barrier to any who dare challenge the twisted will of the druids of the Fang. As we approach, Pythas cries out a dire warning. The coils of death will crush you. And with a roar that reverberates through the underground expanse, he unleashes the full fury of nature's wrath upon us. A deviant shambler, an immense bog beast capable of regeneration, quickly joins the fight. Bolts of lightning crackle from his fingertips, searing the air with ozone as they streak towards their targets while the ground beneath our feet trembles with the force of his thunderclap. Watch closely, for even in corruption, the remnants of a protector linger. In moments of brief respite, the hands of the Fanglord glow with the soft light of healing, mending the wounds of his allies and prolonging the confrontation. The skirmish is long and arduous, a true test of metal and will. Pythas fights with the desperation of one who has nothing left to lose, yet in the hearts of our adventurers, resolve burns brighter. As the Lord of the Fang falls, his last breath is a lament for the life he once knew, for the friend he once served. Among the echoes of battle, let us not forget the spoils of our victory. Who has been gathering the pieces of the Embrace the Viper set? Come forth and claim the armor of the Fang as the next piece in your collection. And take this mace. With the stinging Viper in your grip, no foe shall stand unchallenged. Let us carry them with the respect they deserve as bearers of history and heralds of caution. Gather close, quickly now, for the path ahead promises even greater challenges. Dare we discover what secrets await us. With courage as our guide, we stride forth into the unknown, ready to unveil the mysteries that lie ahead. Our path leads us to a hidden nook where we stumble upon a battered chest, firmly shut. Who knows what treasures lie within? With a shared glance of excitement and trepidation, we agree to let fate determine who claims its contents. Out comes the dice, rolling with a clatter that echoes off the stone walls. Well, would you look at that? I actually won. To the victor go the spoils, as they say. Don't mind me, just restocking on healing and mana potions. As we move deeper into the winding chasm, the air thickens and the distant rumblings of thunder grow louder, not from the skies above, but from the caverns ahead. There, within a section of the cave designed to house a being of legend, resides Scum, a colossal thunder lizard. Scum, favoured as a pet by Lord Pythas, commands a thunderous presence that is a challenge few dare to face, a juggernaut whose roar echoes the tempest's wrath. Seeking refuge from the harshness of the barons, his journey led him to this place of dread where he found nothing but corruption. Now, 
dark energies surge through his veins, transforming him into a creature of power and rage. Stay vigilant, for this beast wields the fury of the storm. As we ready ourselves, Scum rears up, unleashing his chained bolt ability. His assault is swift and unforgiving. The air crackles and hisses as the bolt strikes, arcing between us, each zap delivering a harsh dose of nature's wrath. Watch the tail, it's a weapon in its own right, swinging dangerously close to our melee combatants. Spread out to avoid its range as we dodge and weave through his attacks. His power is an unbridled force, untamed as the environment from whence he hails. As our blades and spells find their mark, the mighty scum grows weaker. At long last the lizard falls, defeated by our combined might. His massive body thunders against the cavern floor, the echo of his demise ringing through the stone corridors. Now let us see what this colossus has guarded so fiercely. Who among you will clothe themselves in the glowing lizard-scale cloak? Speak, and it shall be yours. And here, the tail spike, a dagger made from the beast's own spine. Indeed, it is a tool designed for the swift and the silent, perfect for a rogue whose deft hands can wield it with deadly precision. With these prizes in hand, we regroup, our spirits lifted by the thrill of discovery and the weight of our quest. The wailing caverns stretch deeper into the darkness, promising more secrets for those bold enough to explore. Before we confront the final threats of these caverns, there lies a challenge that often proves as treacherous as any foe we've faced. This jump right here is notoriously unforgiving, and rightly so. Miss your step, and it's a swift journey back to the very beginning, or worse, a deadly plunge to the cave's depths. So please, mind your footing and take it slow. The only thing more embarrassing than fumbling this jump is watching the rest of us advance while you make the long trek back from down below. As our journey continues, we draw closer to the lair of Lord Serpentis, the last of the Fang Lords and the ill-fated leader of the Druids of the Fang. He was Narolex's most gifted pupil, and his ambition to mirror his mentor's revered status drove him to the brink of madness. Now master of his own misguided followers, he exudes a corrupted aura, a shadow of the great teacher he yearned to become. The deviant dread fangs, his fearsome companions, stand ready, poised to defend their leader at a moment's notice. Tread lightly and beware his potent arsenal, for his ability to cast sleep can halt even the most valiant warrior's charge, plunging them into a forced slumber. The atmosphere crackles around him, ready to strike down any who challenge his dominion. Suddenly, he turns his gaze towards us, and his voice echoes ominously through the damp air. I am the Southern King. King. I, I do, do anything. anything. The moment is upon us. Strike true and hold your ground, steadfast in your training and unshakable in your belief in each other. As the battle unfolds, we face a foe who, despite his lost sanity, retains the vestiges of his once noble pursuit of wisdom and power. Serpentis wields his healing arts not for restoration, but to sustain the twisted crusade against those who would see the nightmare ended. This clash is fierce and fraught with peril, but united, our resolve does not waver. We fight on, pushing the Fanglord back with every strike, every parry a step closer to victory. His spells grow desperate, his gestures wilder, but we stand firm, a unified force against his insanity. At last, exhausted and overwhelmed, Lord Serpentis collapses with a shudder under our combined assault, his whispered claims of divinity fading into the echoing silence of the cavern. As the dust settles, we gather to claim the spoils of another victory. Here, amidst the treasures, lies the footpads of the Fang, another piece of the revered set, waiting to encase the feet of one who has proven themselves swift and brave. And there, gleaming under the fallen Fanglord, lies Venom Strike, a bow and arrow of exquisite make and deadly promise. Who among you will harness the sting of the serpent? Step forth and claim these items of triumph, for they will be crucial in the obstacles that lie ahead.
Now gather your strength, for our adventure is far from over. Let's set our sights on deeper shadows yet to be explored, as the path before us holds challenges greater than any we've faced. In the deepest crags of the Wailing Caverns, where the air hums with the whispers of ancient growth, dwells Verdan the Everliving, an entity of nature gone awry. This bog beast of immense power was once a benign guardian, a protector of his underground sanctuary. Now, Verdan guards the threshold to the deepest secrets of his verdant prison, corrupted by the dark tendrils of Narelex's nightmare. Around him, the natural beauty of the caverns is overshadowed by the malignancy that has seeped into root and vine, leaving only aggression in its wake. Watch your step and ready yourselves, for Verdan is not merely a creature to be vanquished, he is a force of nature itself. His grasping vines can immobilize even the most agile adventurer among you, rendering them helpless against his crushing embrace. Those with ranged attacks take positions at the back. Healers, keep your focus sharp on the warriors bearing the brunt of the assault. The battle with the Bog Beast is one of strength and endurance, most certainly our toughest fight yet. His towering form, a living monolith resistant to both blade and spell, seems undaunted by our efforts. However, as the clash of steel against Vine endures, his defences gradually begin to wane. We can see the wear in his movements, the slow yielding of his armour of foliage to our determination. Stay focused, do not relent, and we might still make it out alive. Ultimately, and with a sombre downfall, Verdan the Everliving is defeated. Among the group there is no jubilation, no triumphant cheers, only a tragic silence fills the air. Here, we witness not the glory of victory, but the tragic end of a gentle beast, a guardian subdued by corruption and slain to end his misery. Let us see what the elemental has left behind. Ah, the living root, a staff that glows with a verdant light, promising strength to its new wielder. And you there, paladin, step forward and claim the seed cloud buckler, let it armor you against the dangers that await. As we approach what appears to be a dead end, the ambient noise of a nearby river grows louder. A hidden passage behind the draping vines, you say? Here? Nonsense. However, a closer inspection reveals that this secret passage indeed descends toward the river below, flowing back to the screaming gully. It will lead us back to the dungeon's entrance, easing our weary return. Onward then. Let us leave this place. Our journey through the Wailing Caverns has taken us back to the very beginning. Guided by wisdom of the still uncorrupted disciple of Narelex, we have reached the pinnacle of our exploration, the place known as Dreamer's Rock. With the four lords of the Fang vanquished, the corridor ahead opens to a solemn ritual site. Here dwells Narelex in eternal slumber, trapped in between the physical world and the dream realm. Stay vigilant, for the journey's end is often where the greatest dangers lie. We escort the Tauren to the ritual stone, and as the disciple begins the sacred rites to free his master from his tormented slumber, the air around us thickens with a palpable tension. Narelex, even in his deep sleep, writhes and twists, his face contorted by the invisible grip of the nightmare that binds him. Watch closely, for the Emerald Dream does not relinquish its hold easily. Visions begin to materialize around us, and moccasins slither from the shadows, their fangs dripping with venom. These creatures are the Nightmare's defenders, summoned to disrupt our efforts and destroy the Disciple. We must protect him at all costs. Stay alert and cover each other, for if Narelex is ever to be brought back from his sleep, it will be because we held the line here against all odds. Just when the tide seems to turn in our favor with many of the Nightmare's minions dispatched, the cavern quakes with a new ominous presence. From the deepest shadows of the Wailing Caverns, heralded by a cold mist, a grotesque manifestation emerges. It is Mutanus the Devourer, a murloc of immense strength, born from the very corruption we seek to eradicate. This is the final test it all comes down to this. 
Mutanus is the Shadow's last defense, its final attempt to keep Narolex enchained. Stand firm, protect the Disciple, and let us end this nightmare once and for all. The Murloc's very presence is an affront to the natural order, a blight upon the waking world that wields terrifying powers. The battle that follows is chaotic and desperate. Mutanus unleashes his terror upon the valiant defenders, his towering form sowing panic and disarray. And beware his thundercrack, which harms and stuns those standing too close. Spread out and be ready to move. The disciple, vulnerable and exposed during his incantations, must be shielded at all costs, lest the entire effort crumble to naught. We encircle the great Murloc, our weapons and spells a symphony of coordinated fury. With every parry and thrust, his movements grow sluggish, his once fierce eyes now reflecting the inevitable truth of his imminent defeat. In a moment of climactic struggle, our combined might forces Mutanus to the ground. His massive form crumbles, and as the monstrous Murloc falls, the oppressive weight of the nightmare lifts, and Narolex exclaims, I'm, I'm awake, awake at, at last. last. Silence follows, heavy and meaningful as the shadows retreat and the essence of the nightmare dissipates, leaving behind the promise of renewal for Narolex and the Wailing Caverns. In this moment of quiet victory, Narolex reunites joyfully with his long-lost disciple. Expressing deep gratitude for the bravery of their companions, they vow to continue their work to restore the barons. With no time to lose, they transform into eagles and soar upwards, eager to rejoin their fellow disciples and tackle the challenges that await in the world above. Gather around the fallen Murloc and let's claim our well-deserved spoils. From his corporeal form are yielded treasures both strange and wondrous. Among these, the mutant scale breastplate shines with an otherworldly gleam, destined for the one among us who has proven their worth. And there, glowing with a mysterious light, is the Deep Fathom Ring, a mystical artifact hailing from the depths of the Emerald Nightmare, now ready to empower its new owner. May it find a worthy hand among you. But that is not all. As we sift through the remains of the defeated druids of the Fang, a cheer erupts among us. We found the Gloves of the Fang. With this last piece, we outfit one of our party members in the complete Embrace the Viper set, wrapping up our adventure in style. As we ascend from the depths of the Wailing Caverns, the fresh air of the Barrens greets us like a long-lost friend, reminding us that we have faced the darkness within and emerged stronger. Consider, my brave travellers, which mysteries that lay below our feet resonated most deeply with you? Share your thoughts with your fellow adventurers or jot them down in your explorer's journal. Now that we bid farewell to the echoing cries, a new whisper calls us forth. In a land where water once flowed mightily, now stand spires that pierce the sky. I look forward to our next meeting. Until then, keep exploring, keep adventuring and stay curious.